Jimmy Fallon canceled by his own leftist staff in complete meltdown. Here's a clip. Of all the late night hosts um, out there, I would say that Jimmy Fallon is perhaps the least annoying, the least hated. The least, uh, poli- um, the least he was political. basically canceled by his fellow late night show hosts for uh, daring. Hosting Donald Trump, yeah. To allow Donald, Donald Trump, Trump yeah. a platform. And, uh, and he, like, rubbed his hair, if you don't remember, Jimmy Fallon did. He, like, rubbed his hair. And he humanized Trump, is what they said. And then they took away his Emmy nomination for that year. And then he came out and groveled and apologized. So, you know, that I got to give him a flack for that. But, yeah, overall, he seems like the least political. And he just doesn't care. He just wants to be a comedian, you know. That, and all the rest of the guys, just are, they're so political. Uh, Late night. Coincidentally... Hosting. This hit piece comes out on him. Now, I'm not saying they're directly related, but it sure seems pretty curious. Now, any one of these late night show hosts are probably complete uh, psychopaths. uh, And I'm, you know, I'm 100% happy and fine uh, that they get dragged for it. But you see this chaos comedy and crying rooms inside Jimmy Fallon's Tonight Show. Now, this is basically a cut and paste of what's so what happens when you are your leftists? Uh, probably, I don't know. Was it last year or something? I don't know like about that the Alan this jo- time. The generous thing. And uh, you see, it was particularly tense days on the set of the Tonight Show with Fallon, the host known for his warm and congenial presence on screen, was acting especially dismissive and irritable during production meetings. A former longtime employee tells Rolling Stone, and he stumbled through rehearsal in front of a studio audience who typically typically sits in on rehearsals for the late night show. Employees who spoke to Rolling Stone about their experience working on The Tonight Show say it's common knowledge that behind the scenes there are good Jimmy days where Fallon's wit and charm and creativity are on full display and bad Jimmy days. This was a... Yeah, maybe. Or maybe... I mean, that could be true. Or maybe some days you have good and bad days and he's like, this is what I have to go and do and rehearse and everything. I have to go and tell these jokes. But then again, he's, they hire him. He hires the producer. I mean, he must have some sway, but it's really hard to say. It really is. On The Tonight Show, it's just like, did they choose your producer? Okay, you could be the, t- on The Tonight Show. But, I mean, Jar- Johnny Carson days and Jay Leno days, maybe they had some sway. But it's like, nowadays, Jimmy probably just has to put up with this stuff. It's like, oh, these are my writers. This is awful. So maybe that's why he has good and bad days. I don't know for sure. I'm just speculating, but that's a good theory. Bad Jimmy Day. They say Fallon seemed to be confused during rehearsal on that day when he crossed out jokes on a piece of paper he was holding, riffed with the audience for a bit, then quizzically looked back down at the same sheet of paper. He couldn't remember. He had just crossed it out himself, the employee says. I was like, oh, my God, he seems drunk. He doesn't know what he's doing. This Maybe could be he doesn't awful. know what to say. This could be just the end of the vibing. show right here. Another staffer says that they from witnessed that? incidents from a live studio feed in their audience, too. A lot of these staffs, too, by the way, are uh, uh, full of far leftists. And so when you surround yourself with these weirdos, this is exactly the type of behavior you get. You have an off day, and then they run to the Rolling Stone. To be fair, though, like I was just saying, though, he might not choose the staff. He might just be one of the staff, essentially. He's the big guy on the staff, but he wants to host the Tonight Show. He probably gets paid a lot of money. So... He might just not even have a choice. According to two current and former, and I'm saying two current and 14 former employees, the Tonight Show had been a toxic workplace for years. For outside the boundaries of what had been considered normal in the high-pressure world of late-night TV, they say the ugly environment behind the scenes starts at the top with Fallon's erratic behavior and trickled down to its ever-changing leadership teams, nine showrunners in the past nine years who seemingly don't know how to say no to Jimmy. Former employees described The Tonight Show as a tense and glum atmosphere with some people alleging they were belittled and intimidated by their bosses, including Fallon himself. Employees described being afraid of Fallon's outbursts and unexpected inconsistent behavior. Many of those staffers voiced their concerns through HR complaints, but problems at The Tonight Show persisted. Well, I mean... So, again, this could just be um, bad jokes. I mean, imagine you, you have these writers and your job is to go in there and t- t- tell these jokes and you're like, I'm the one who's the face of these jokes. 
I don't know. You know, I try to be a really nice guy to everybody, but at the same time, if 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 the, someone else was choosing my staff, and and these are the jokes I have to tell, and they're just horrendous. It makes sense you'd have good and bad days. Maybe, again, like the writers just have good and bad days, and that's just, the, 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 they're kind of projecting. You Like, they bring in bad jokes, and then he has a bad day on the bad jokes. Are they going to talk about that? And by the way, I just looked it up on a side note. Yeah, Jimmy Fallon makes $16 million annually. Would you go and give that up? You know, a lot of people would, but he's in the entertainment industry, as for uh, been for a long time. He's on SNL and everything. Could you imagine making $16 million a year for probably only working a few hours a day? So he's just like, okay, whatever. But then when he has to tell these jokes, like, uh, I can just write all these jokes and be way funnier. But that's not what I get paid to do. I get to be, I get paid to be Jimmy Fallon and this is what I have to put up with. It's like, uh, that could definitely be the case for him. You know, it's a, I could see how that's irritating and he would just go off on people. Even if he is a nice, genuine, uh, a genuinely nice guy. It's like, you can only push someone so far and then it makes sense why he would start getting drunk all the time too. He's like, oh, I just need to get drunk to get through this. Cause oh my goodness. These jokes are awful. It's like, what did I get myself into? And he has a contract and he's probably like, ah, oh, that's 16 million a year. That's a lot of money. I can see why he would not want to give that up. And I don't think he's like a based guy or anything. He's not like a Republican. So he's probably like, okay, with the leftist stuff. But it's like the jokes aren't even funny. It's like, fine, I'll, 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 I'll push your leftist agenda, but at least make the, the jokes funny. And again, he, I'm, the more I think about it, he probably doesn't even choose the staff. So he's just stuck with here with these guys, and it's like it makes sense he would, uh, you know, be prone to outbursts and drinking and stuff if this is what he has to deal with because it sounds like a nightmare. And again, you don't want to give it up. It's not like oh, go go get hired for something else. Like sixteen million a year. Jimmy Fallon was on SNL and he's done movies here and there after in between that and the Tonight Show, but he's not getting sixteen million a year for making movies. He might make one to two million at best. 16 million, he probably gets bonuses for that one Universal show. He has uh, Universal Studios in Florida. He has like a ride or something, an experience. I've heard about it. I don't really know what it is exactly. But then he probably gets bonuses for that type of stuff too. So it's just like, oh, uh, an endorsement. So he's going to lose 20 million plus a year. It's like, pff, I'll just say the bad jokes. But then it's just like at some certain times we're like, oh, you're just, you're ruining my life, I say. Get out of here! I, I the more I think about it again, he probably can't even fire these people, so he's just going nuts. But uh, let's dive into more of the details. I would say that um, you hire a bunch of like leftoid. Uh, and again, I don't think that's his choice. People, and this is what you get. Seven it's probably not his choice. Say that's why he's so mad. Health was impacted, and it was commonplace to hear people joking about wanting to end themselves. So dramatic. Uh, what? I, I mean, get I don't a, know. The get producers a new job. felt pressure translated down to the employees. People that worked under them felt the He's pressure. Not, they're not failing one getting mistake, 16 million gone, a year. And you would be easily replaced. You have all these NBC pages in the building who are, who are ready, willing, and waiting to take your job. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess. Nobody told Jimmy. Uh, everybody walked on eggshells, especially showrunners. Another former employee says... He never knew which Jimmy were you going to get and when he was going to throw a hissy fit. Look at how many showrunners went through so quickly. We know they didn't last long. Employees said they had nightmares related to work and were in constant state of fear. One former employee said, says they had their first anxiety attack while working on the show and were put on anti-anxiety medication for the first time. Another employee says they felt physical ramifications of declining that's, mental health. That's, that like, is wild. That is wild. Anti-psychotic medication or get a different job. But could you work at a job? I'm just curious. I couldn't do it. Could you work at a job where you were so stressed out that you're considering getting these SSRIs or whatever that eventually could make you go nuts? Or would you just find another job? Even if, if, if it's not high paying and everything, why can't you put, throw that on your resume and use that for leverage? Right? It's just like, that's how dramatic it is. I would never, ever, if my job was that bad, I would find a new job. I wouldn't start taking medication, as they call it, to try to get through it. It's like, no, get a new job. 
Because that stuff you get hooked on for life. It causes all this brain damage. The, the, the um, withdrawal effects are wild. They are wild. So, yeah, stay away from that stuff. And if they really want, if they really had the hour of time, they would have found an, another job. Maybe not, but they should have. So, you know, the, I just can't even imagine that scenario where I would be like, okay, I'm going to go on anti uh, psychotics, or I could, what's the, how is there even a choice there? It's such a simple choice, right? They're hair thinning and weakened nail beds. Wow. Four other employees said they are we in therapy because of their experiences. Three people say I'm not surprised they if they're getting antipsychotics. Self deletion. Wild. Get a new job, bro. Get a new job. It sounds like you have a bunch of super twenty ply soft employees, but you know Fallon is, you know, has a Just long get a new and job. storied history of enjoying the drink. Um, that's, this could be part of why I don't feel bad for Jimmy Fallon because these are the people he hires and keeps around him. It probably is a high pressure um, job. It probably, like is. I said, I don't know if Jimmy actually, Jimmy probably it has no say in this. He probably really doesn't. Why would you hire writers and stuff that you know are going to hate your opinion and hate that you brought on Trump? Even though it was five years ago, five plus years ago. Seven years ago, I think it's 2017 or 2016. Yeah, so like seven, eight years ago. And you're like, why would Jimmy want these people on there? His, 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 I don't even understand. Yeah, so his, 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 I I assume he can choose a showrunner or he just lambasts them. Maybe that's his plan, just lambast these kids enough so they won't want to work for me. That could be a strategy. Like, again, he could be a good and genuine person, a nice person, but then you, you push him to this type of stuff. They're a bunch of leftists, and he's just forced to work with them, and he has to push the, the executive so much to give him actually a decent showrunner. That's probably why they've went through so many showrunners is, yeah, I hate this person. Okay, fine, we'll find you another one. I hate this guy too. Okay, and then he, I think he's probably, like, just thinking, like, Okay, maybe if I complain enough and they fire enough people, maybe they'll let me choose the showrunner. Again, this is just, there are so many NDAs with this type of stuff, so obviously it's just theory from uh, in conjecture from my point of view, but that could definitely be the case, and it would make a lot of sense how a genuine and a nice guy would turn into this and be such an, a, a jerk if he doesn't get to choose any of this. And this is what he has to deal with day in and day out. And he, again, how can you quit 20 million, 16, 20 million, 16 annual from NBC. And then another 20 million in endorsements or whatever he probably gets. How can you quit that? But you do want to do genuine comedy. He's a genuinely really funny guy. I've seen like his, uh, SNL. Um, if you haven't seen it, go, go Google SNL audition. It's really funny. He's so good at impressions. So he's worked his whole life to get here and he wants the money, but then this is the comedy he has to t tell because of the showrunners or whoever his uh, executive producers are hiring or the network wants. This happens all the time. If you th go look at WWE wrestling, I don't watch it really that often, but I think it's interesting the behind the scenes. Uh, the reason why a lot of them going downhill is uh, it, uh, some of the executives at the network they were on and they were getting just tons of money. They were like, no, you have to do this, 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 and this. So it would make a lot of sense if the network is choosing the showrunner or the executive producers who are hiring the staff, and he just hates it. I could definitely see that. Again, just conjecture, but I could see that. Let's uh, uh, watch the rest of the clip. Working with these lunatics. But when you're some like super snowflake leftoid, um, who, are you, who's, who demands that your feelings be validated you know, constantly, um, I'm not surprised you can't hack it. I think it's great. It's the, it's the start of the end of late night empire. Yeah. Fair enough. They're going to cancel Jimmy Fallon. You watch and get rid of Just him. Cancel all this. Uh, they're all on strike. They're doing this ridiculously cringe podcast now. Oh, uh, it's so um, cringe. I you know, I, I think that. that, uh, you know, I'm happy to see it mentally. I was in the lowest place of my life. I didn't want to live anymore. I thought about taking my own life. Go all get the time a different job. Says. I know deep down that I would never actually do it, but I had, I'm like, how do I think about it all the time? I mean, maybe just get a different that's job. That's awful. Yeah. I mean, that's awful. Just get a different These job. These all though. sound like low level employees. 
get a different job. Even if it's a high There's level. There's a million jobs out there that probably pay better. I mean, the most of the in, in, entertainment industry is woke anyways, so go get a job at Disney, right? Or, or try, go get a job somewhere else or do an independent thing if you're so talented. I mean, YouTube is huge. Rumble and everything is taken off. All this stuff is huge. If you're that talented, you're that funny, go do stand-up or something. You know, go get a different job. I feel for these people if they're really in this boat, you know, they're that that they're that distraught. I just couldn't imagine, like I was saying before, being at a job where I'm going to stick with this if it's so bad for me. And you're not going forward. You're not, if, especially if you're creative, you're not going to be doing your best work when you're in this environment. Move on and just think of it as a bad part of your life. Sticking with this if you really hate it is insane. But just to be like talking about this and just having all these negative feelings about it, which if you, again, I get if they're that distraught, but again, just go find something else. It's way better than going to therapy. You're spending all this money on therapy. You're getting on all this crazy medicine, but you won't just go get a new job. Come on. It's just like make better decisions. You know, no offense to these people, but still like Jeremy's way more harsh on these people. Even like if someone's a left or whatever, whatever. I mean, I get it. These people aren't used to the real world. But that would get you used to it. And I just don't understand. Even if you're not used to the real world, why would you make yourself all depressed instead of just finding another way to make money? And they could put Jimmy Fallon on their resume. That's One employee huge. said they lost nearly 20 pounds during their time working under showrunner. Hey, I should probably get a job there. And they <laughs> cried themselves to sleep every night. That's awful. I know other people but, in my but department are just also get a happy different job. with the mistreatment. And never, they keep saying mistreatment, but they don't actually seem... They don't actually list anything. If Jimmy was in a bad mood, every day is, everybody's day is screwed. One former employee says people wouldn't joke around in the office. They wouldn't stand around and talk to each other. It was very much like focus on whatever it is that you have to do because Jimmy's in a bad mood. If he sees that, he might fly off. Well, maybe do your job. Yeah, if he's mad maybe about you shouldn't that. Be, oh, okay. Maybe you shouldn't be... Yeah. Uh, Maybe you shouldn't be... So if Jimmy's mad, that he's going to get mad and if he sees you joking around. So when I when I watched this video once earlier and I was like, oh, okay, maybe they're supposed to be making jokes. But if he's mad or writing jokes, maybe writers, but obviously not, right? Because it's just like, why would he fly off the handle if you're joking around? He'd think you're writing jokes. So you're not supposed to be doing what you're doing. And then he sees you doing that and he's like, oh, no, this on top of it. On top of everything I hate about this, now they're not even working. Why are they here? And this is just what he has to deal with? Yeah, it sounds it sounds like for Jimmy Fallon, this is as bad. Maybe he's crying himself to sleep. At least he gets good money, though. Like I was saying, these people should just leave if this is what you're doing. Maybe he's crying himself to sleep. Maybe he's doing everything that they're thinking. They're saying maybe he has to go to therapy for this stuff. It's because of you guys, like you're just not a good fit. No one's a good fit. Just go and leave, find something else, get a good fit. Go work for Jimmy Kimmel. He'll be happy with you, I'm sure. So go there. Why are you just all just in this crazy box that you don't want to be in with each other and you're only there to get money? It's just there's more important things than money. They're spending all this money for therapy and stuff. You're not even getting that good of a salary. If you're spending money on all these SSRIs, therapy, and spending all this time just worrying about it instead of working on something that you should be worried about. You know, every person involved, I feel bad for them, but it's all they're doing and they should all just break out of that box because they can leave. It's like they're stuck in this box that they hate. It smells bad and they don't want to be in there and there's a million holes in it and then all of them can leave whenever they want. But then there's like, oh, well, you know, it is kind of warm in here. Is it warm outside? Uh, no, it's a little colder, but it's only a little colder. It's weird they do this. It's interesting. And then being in that box torments you know this pain. It's just like, well, there's no pain outside. Yeah, but it's a little bit warmer than outside. It's like, oh, this kind of drives me nuts, you know? As like an independent creator, I work for myself, right? So it's just like you can go and, and make your own thing. Not everyone has that ability. I understand that. But you can go get for something else. And you, can, and you can try the independent route, you know, worst case scenario in this industry in particular. Uh, standing around and wasting your time and wasting company time and money joking around. Yeah. You know? Then his show is not written I, I, well these, because this you guys is what are happens. I don't feel bad for Jimmy, but it sounds like he hired a bunch of a bunch of uh 
like snowflakes. Literally, like, yeah, I don't snowflakes. think he's the one who's in charge. I, of I, I don't know guys. how else to describe it. Fallon scolded the crew member who was in charge of his cue cards in the middle of taping with Jerry Seinfeld. He can't Seinfeld. be in charge. Seinfeld. The more I just thought about it, why would he be raging at his employees about all this stuff if he could just fire them? He must not have that ability. It makes absolutely no sense. You know, what Jeremy, the guy in the clip here from the quartering, he's like saying, all that. no, that absolutely makes absolutely no sense. Because it's if he's the one hiring them, he could just fire them. Why would he scold them? Just fire them instantly. He probably doesn't have that ability. Most certainly doesn't. The more you know, we think about it, he must not even have that ability. And that's why he's always so mad. Then told Makes Fallon sense. to apologize. He repeats this, I'm sorry, but he was saying that he did. Um, Jimmy Fallon was having an interview with Jerry Seinfeld. And then Jimmy Jimmy started scolding a cue card guy, and then Jerry Seinfeld said he should apologize. Really? Sorry about that. Two employees say they saw Fallon seemingly inebriated at work back in 2017. Seemingly. Another two employees say on a separate occasion in 2019 and 2020, what? they it's thought years ago. they smelled alcohol on his breath when they entered an elevator with him during the workday. According to eight former employees, okay. Fallon's behavior seemed to be dependent on if he appeared to be hungover from the night before. Or your terrible jokes. It's a good theory. One employee says, depending on Fallon moods, they felt like the notes and his feedback could be passive aggressive, personal insults as opposed to constructive criticism. Yeah, he hates they say you. He would quit. write comments like, Are you okay? Seriously, do you need help? <laughs> Rolling Stone reviewed. Well, I mean, they're employees. literally saying they need help. Maybe he's literally wondering. Maybe that's not even a note. These people are crazy. Maybe that's not even a note. Maybe he just didn't even, wasn't even responding to the note. Maybe he's literally asking, are you okay? Do you need help? He could literally be asking that. And then they just take it the wrong way. That could be the case because these people are literally in therapy and are taking SSRIs. Maybe he's being genuine. I don't know if he is or not. Obviously, conjecture again, but it's like that could be the case. You are in therapy and seem like you do need help and according to their own admissions. Now they're complaining about it. What well, was written on a note? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's just where he wanted to write it. I don't know. Maybe he saw you sad over there, you know, and he just asked it. Who knows? I don't know. He could have been just saying that for people he hates, like I was saying earlier, but at the same time, maybe he was being genuine. He's like, do you actually need help? Alleged notes from Fallon. They read, ugh, lame. Oh, no. He called an idea lame. What's going on with you? Don't you don't have to do that. Yourself. Same in place. So he, they, they, want, they don't even want constructive criticism, apparently. They, he said, ugh, lame. Oh, oh, no. I would think that was hilarious. I like, I, I, I like making jokes and stuff a lot. But if someone, if I said something and they said, ugh, lame, I would think that was hilarious. I'd start dying. I'd be like, yeah, probably not my best work. Probably not my best joke. You know? But I wouldn't just, like, cry about it. It's like, I would just take it as criticism and just, I would personally think that was hilarious. And aren't these comedy people, they want to be in the comedy industry, but then they, they hear ugly lame and they just don't even think it's funny. They don't even laugh it off. Yeah, whoever's hiring the staff for Jimmy Fallon, they are awful. No one is even there is funny, and you could tell. Comedians would think that stuff was hilarious. Fallon they wouldn't would cry about it. also send combative emails, not emails. Oh, no. Combative. Do we have an example? Two employees remember witnessing Fallon scold a crew member who was in charge of his cue cards in the middle of taping with comedian yeah, Jerry Seinfeld. Here it is again. They say it was an uncomfortable so moment, and Seinfeld told Fallon to apologize to the cue card production member, which he then allegedly did. The employee allegedly. says that incident, Nothing which was awkward is to watch, did not make it to the version of the show that appeared on television. I love, how, I love how everything else is... Oh, they said they said this. They said of this, and then yeah, they said this. Uh, they said that they thought they smelled alcohol on Jimmy's breath, but then allegedly he did apologize. It's crazy. These uh, media companies, these writers are in the same boat. They're such snowflakes too. At these like Rolling Stone, that they're just gonna be like, oh yeah, yeah, allegedly, and then I'm gonna pick a side, and it's obvious in the writing because they're like, if this happened to me, I couldn't believe it. I would, I have to go to therapy for my job, and I, it's not even bad. I couldn't even imagine being you. So then they just frame it. That's how they do things in media, anyways. If you're if you're not doing exactly what the establishment says, you have to be canceled, and we're gonna try to get you canceled. That's mainstream. That's all these mainstream uh, journalists. And, um, yeah, just all the publications.
awkward and Jerry was like, you should apologize to him, almost trying to make it a joke. A former employee says, it was one of the strangest moments I've ever seen. So Jimmy that's one of the most drunk. strangest moments you've ever seen was that these guys have some cushy lives. Me, I've seen way more worse and strange moments than that growing up. You know, yeah. I, I'm glad that they have that, that, that they had that life, life, those lives. But I'm just saying that's one of the strangest things you've ever seen. Seeing someone that scolded someone because they were messing up the cue cards. Yeah. Welcome to the world, real world, folks. Strangest things. It's like what they do in schools now and stuff, too. That's one of the most strangest things they've ever seen. I highly doubt it. And um, a bit of a jerk on set. Oh, no. Every, every one of these complaints is like a complete nothing beggar. Nothing beggar. Nothing burger. Now, this whole article in the That's Rolling Stone, funny. this nothing is just bagger. about the collapse of late night. They're trying to get rid of him. Priscilla, showrunner at the time, did implement regular internal diversity and culture meetings after, and to this day, the Tonight Show has a diversity and inclusion council. Great. Some employees say they were hopeful that he wanted to make lasting changes on the show, but they were let down a few months when Betterman took off, took over. She began bullying and mistreating the staff. One she black employee fire says that Garnet Betterman kept asking, what's going on with your hair? The employee also said they witnessed and make comments about how much food people would eat, saying to staffers, we're eating just a lot today and not caring about what we look like. Two former employees say they were also mistreated by Swiss who bullied what they look like. So what, uh, it, what they look like, there must have been like executives. I think that's what they were saying. These people are crazy. So if, if from based on that statement, if you like break it down and think about it, not caring about what they look like, they were probably getting, inv uh, it, 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 getting like, giving a tour of like a media or whatever. And then they're just eating and not even like working out what they're supposed to be doing. So then whoever who they're trying to look good to was probably like, Ugh, all these guys just do is eat and they don't even work. It was probably like a budgetary committee. And then there's like, all they do is eat. And then it's just like, Ooh, you don't even care what we look like. You could see why their bosses are mad at them because just based on their own statements, their bosses are like, you don't care what we look like in whatever scenario where they would care about that on that specific day. And then the staff doesn't even care about that at all. They're like, oh, that's just what they said. We're eating too much. You don't care what we look like. It's just mean. It's just like, bro, where you have a budgetary meeting, you might get fired. You don't even care what like the arts that everyone looks like. You're going to get us fired. And then there's like, oh, whatever. These people just have the inability to get another job. It's just, but then they just want to go get fired, apparently. I don't know. These, these people on this staff are, are wild. And this is the industry, entertainment industry. That's why I, keep, I want to cover this so in, in depth because this is the industry, in, entertainment industry. Now, I love, like, you know, all the new studios and independent stuff popping up because this stuff, it just can't work out. Because this is who they fund. And this is if you go and use the entertainment industry, which I do too, you know, to be honest. Watching the Lord of the Rings on HBO Max. It's amazing. Extended edition. Highly recommend it. But my point is, the more you give these guys money, this is who these guys are going to hire. And yeah, and the, this, is, this is the type of industry it's creating. But they're going downhill. The industry is overall. So hopefully they're learning from this type of stuff. And yell at them. These are all, they, this is so stupid. This is like the dumbest, this is the dumbest hit piece in history. Go work at any restaurant and the head chef is going to yell at you. That's just how it is. Not maybe literally any, but any decent restaurant. My roommate works at a couple restaurants and the one chef, he yells at people and he gets, it's how it is. That P, you can't take it personal. Not one of these things is any single. They're just trying to destroy Jimmy Fallon, and they're probably still mad he had Trump on. Yeah, that's what I said. Every earlier. one of these employees sounds incredibly soft. Yeah, I've they can't I've even find another job since I was 14 years old. I've had bosses smack me in the back of the head. Oh wow! I've had bosses scream in my face, and you know what yeah, I did? I'd quit. I quit, and I got a different job. I didn't run to a newspaper and whine about uh, being quote unquote. Or get on SSRIs. I, it's like. Uh, 
it's it's so bizarre that this even exists that's thousands and thousands of words of ex employees whining about not being able to hack it at the job jimmy fallon is a drunk job. okay Maybe they're all mad about the podcast. I don't know. Maybe he's a drunk as you created but it. This is the this is like a total nothing burger. I mean, get a. I mean, these employees are also. This is what happens when you have a staff full of leftoids. Mm -hmm. That's yep. exactly what it is. They run to yep. HR. I never made an HR complaint in my life. I just quit jobs. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just it's just so stupid. But that's modern day media, I suppose. Yeah, it's a modern day entertainment industry. It's insane. This is a modern day like working for most companies, and this is they indoctrinate these kids through uh, college. They they don't understand. They 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 treat them like they're they, they literally treat them like they're snowflakes. They're like they're saying like, okay, if if they don't get exactly what they need, they're gonna melt down. Which the, the, as the title of the video is, they literally do though. They start melting down. It's just like, why do you do this? You know, it's just like, uh, calm down. So all these universities go and just like, oh no, you're perfect. You know, we got to make sure in the classroom, we don't, we don't trigger you at all. And then they go into the real workplace and they're like, oh, people don't care about that. Why don't they care about that? This guy's so mean. My boss are mean. Why don't they care about what my professors taught me? You are paying your professors. They are paying you. It's the exact opposite. It's not the same. But these kids are just like, they're so just naive nowadays. It's like, what are you talking about? If you mess up at your job when they're taking part of their money to pay you and you're not doing what they're paying you to do and they can't fire you for whatever reasons, which that's what it sounds like in these circumstances, they are gonna get mad. It's like, I could be, like Jimmy Fallon like, could be like, I could be writing these jokes and just pay me more. Why am I paying these people? And then he's like forced by the network to actually say these jokes on a day in, day in and day out. I'd also be really mad. I'm getting mad thinking about it. You know, I think you probably are too. You watching. Yeah, you're probably really mad about this. It's so annoying. So give me more money. If you just want to cry about it and be like, oh, no, I can't handle anything. And if I if, if if someone tells me I should be doing a better job, I have to go to therapy and stuff. And then that's, could you imagine? Oh, man, this is just so wild. Could you imagine you're not getting paid as much because you're paying these people and then they're spending their money on therapy because they have the job that they don't even want. So you're not getting paid as much. Why? Go get another job. Don't pay for therapy. It's okay. The, all these diversity uh, things and stuff, that's probably why they can't fire them. So they just can't. Otherwise, why wouldn't they just fire them and find someone new? It's so much easier. If you have this bad of staff, they probably can't. This network's probably, no. Nope. DEI, we need diversity. We need these people. And if you fire this diverse person, we're going to get a lawsuit or get in trouble. That's why these guys still probably don't want to quit. Well, if they fire me, I could go file a lawsuit and they'll settle because they're woke American companies. Uh, this whole thing is just such a mess. I'd just fire them and take the lawsuit and have a good show. I really would. I'd be like, I am done with this. I am not. I'm sick of this. Or I would just quit. I mean, Jimmy has that much money. But again, I could see why he wouldn't want to give that up, though. That's a lot of money. $16 million a year to do what he does. But at the same time, now he's miserable. Like I say, he might be in therapy. He might, he's drinking all the time because of this, because of his life, making all this money. It's like, let's go get a, a different gig, man. Everyone in this box is just, like I said earlier, it's just, they're all miserable. Get, everyone should get out of the box. The box should be destroyed and they could go on their merry ways, you know? So, yeah. But it's frustrating. You know, me as a business owner and, and a creative, I'm frustrated for everybody. They should be able to go and have their jobs, have, do their good work. Everyone should, and everyone should have a good product, and it be entertaining millions of people. But you can't. It's not that simple anymore. You bring Trump on, you rub his hair, and what happens? And you get snubbed for Emmys, which I don't even know why he cares. I'm like, don't give me an Emmy. I'll be the top-rated uh, uh, talk show, late-night talk show host. I don't care about an Emmy. You know that M and M line. You think I'd give a damn about a Grammy? Like, I don't give a damn about an Emmy. 
Eminem, that was his best. That was one of the biggest selling albums uh, since 2000, that album. So it sold over 10 million copies. So it's just like, who cares? Don't give me a Grammy. Don't give me an award. Don't give me anything. I'll be the top. And that's what these people should be focused on. But again, I don't think Jimmy, he, had, he probably doesn't have a say. The, the networks are telling him what he can do and can't do. So for him, it's miserable too. They should just end all this. Jimmy is a really talented. He's really good at doing impersonations and stuff. Go do your own thing. And then you won't even be impacted by the writer strike or anything. So who even cares? Take the money loss. He probably doesn't need it. Probably is the key word. These guys can all go find another job. And these people have to realize, hey, if I'm just woke and I'm just sad all the time, people aren't going to put up with it. Yeah, he taught me that in college, but it's, 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 it's not the real world. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe for daily news updates, smash that like button, share this video with your friends, and share your thoughts on the story in the comments below. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.